If you're told how to ride a bicycle and you haven't really learned how to ride a bicycle, how to balance yourself on two wheels, are you able to ride a bicycle because you've been told over and over and over again how to do it? What if you read a book? What if you saw a video? What if you sat on a bicycle? The problem with us in this work is that we hear these things, remember yourself, don't identify, don't express negative emotions. We hear these things over and over and over again. Because we heard them, we think we understand them. And the unfortunate thing about that is, when we start thinking that we understand something, when we hear it again, we stop listening. I have thought of having a camera up here. Every once in a while, when people get to the point where they're sleeping, they're not totally asleep, they're like this. <laughs> I want to take a picture and show it to them. This is what you look like. It's grim. It's really grim. And why it's grim is because we tune out. When we've heard something over and over again, we tune out because we really believe that we understand it because we've heard it. We believe that because something is in our memory, that it's ours. But let me tell you that this work says that just because something is in your memory doesn't mean it belongs to you. It's just like if a policeman pulled you over and he opened your trunk and there was 40 pounds of marijuana in the back of your trunk. You would say, well, that's not mine. He'd say, but it's in your trunk. Yeah, but it's not mine. I don't know how it got there you would still go to jail. You do realize that. Yeah. Yeah. So we think that memory is like our trunk. If it's there, it's ours. No, that's not the way it is. You don't get something just by putting it in your trunk, just by learning it. Any more than you understand how to ride a bicycle, you can balance yourself on a bicycle because you read about it or heard about it. So this is what we have to understand. And this is a big barrier in the work because people don't get beyond this. And I got to tell you, Every one of you has this, and I run up against this barrier almost every time I talk to you about anything that matters. It's not fun, but when you think you know, you resist. But when you resist, you're not just resisting, you're making me wrong. Well, when you make me wrong, what you've done is you've undermined yourself by removing what you put over you to lift you up. For you, I represent this work. When you bring me down to your level, what you have done is you have made the work null and void in your own life. Do you see that? Do you understand that? Well, I don't know if you'll, you can nod your heads, but that doesn't really mean anything, does it? The mechanical part of the intellectual center, the work calls the formatory center or the formatory apparatus. Unfortunately, ordinary thinking, that's what we do, is all done by this formatory center, this formatory apparatus, this lowest, most mechanical part of the intellectual center that only knows how to think by comparison, how to think yes or no. So for that part of the intellectual center, everything is either true or false. True or false, it's daylight outside. We all look out, we say true. And I say false. This world is set up like that. Formatory center, this lowest part, this mechanical part of intellectual center, is what the whole world's about. Point, counterpoint. They have television programs about it. They have political parties about it. Abortion, no abortion. Tax, no tax. War, no war. Like there's nothing in between. Instead of thinking, we say in the work, the work walks on two legs. But instead of thinking, what people do is this kind of one-footed, heavy hopping. It's either this or that. Boom, boom. And trying to get people off of their one foot that they're hopping on. And they'll hop on one foot or the other foot, but they won't walk. They'll hop. And then they want to justify their hopping. Like, well, hop if you want. Fine. Have a good time. But don't expect to be able to keep up hopping because you can't keep up hopping with someone who's walking. It just doesn't happen. Trust me, I know this from personal experience. So the whole world is divided like this. Yes or no, true or false, right or wrong. We've heard about this but we don't know it. In higher centers, that is in the consciousness that comes with higher centers. When people start to get in touch with higher centers, their level of being changes. In that consciousness that comes with that level of being, there is no yes or no, it changes. Now the work tells us that it's yes and no. In the consciousness that comes with higher centers, it's yes and no, it's not yes or no. There are no contradictions, there's only a union of yes and no, which gives us something different. A third thing is all we can think. It, it's a third thing. It's the combination of yes and no. Yes, 
So if it was going to be an algebraic equation, it would be y plus n equals x. Did I get that right? See? The brain power working already. All these calculations that I've been doing. One plus one is two. You know, and how quickly I can do it now. Two plus two is four. Arithmetic math is not, you know, it's still difficult for me. Very difficult for me. Words? That's an entirely different thing. Math, arithmetic, I just have this mental block. It's like running into a wall. But I keep running into it. And sooner or later, my head is going to get soft enough to get something in there. I just keep running into the wall. Because the work comes from the conscious circle of humanity, it's different. It walks on two legs. It doesn't hop on one or the other, which is very different from us. How we get places is in the thought world is by hopping. How higher centers, the consciousness that comes with higher centers get places is by walking. There's a difference. If we don't take a side in this life, we're regarded as weak. We're for the war against the war. Well, there's a lot of ways to deal with this. Well, I'm for the war. Okay, that's one way. I'm against the war. That's another way. What's a third way? I don't care. I'm apathetic. I'm indifferent. So we're regarded as weak in the world if we don't take a side. We have hypnotized ourselves in this life, saying a thing is either true or false. A person is either good or bad. This thing is either right or wrong. And when I say we've hypnotized ourselves, what I mean is we have mechanically fallen into this way of thinking about things. Is it daylight outside? Yes. Everybody looks outside and says, yes, the sun is shining, it's daylight. I say no, because on the other side of this planet, it's night. Well, is the other side of this planet is not outside. Really? Where is it then? We are all standing on this planet, and so it is both day and night on this planet right now. Mm -hmm. There's a combination of yes and no that gives us a third thing which is a bigger picture of the planet, a bigger picture of our place on it, a bigger picture of our solar system, where suddenly there's no contradiction, up or down. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Is it up or down? Is the sky up or down? Is it up or down? Oh, no, we're not going to answer anything now. He's tricking us. <laughs> we're not taking any chances. We're going to be apathetic. It's, up. it's out. It's out from the earth. You go out to the sun, not up to the sun. How could you go up to the sun? Which, which way is up to the sun? It's out to the sun, right? Again, it's just this other way of thinking is just bigger. It takes more into account. So it's a yes and no, which is more inclusive, which is more unifying. And that's really what higher centers offer to us in the thinking realm. It's one of the benefits that comes from being able to be in touch with higher centers, is that the states of consciousness are states that are bigger, and it's easier to remove contradictions by seeing a bigger picture. Is it day or night? It's not day or night, it's day and night. How can you say that? Look outside, the sun's shining, it's day. This is what we call daylight. Yes, this is what we call daylight. And on another part of my planet, it's nighttime. It's like the little prince. His little asteroid was so small that he could move his chair and watch the sunset, move his chair and watch the sunset, move his chair and watch the sunset. But see, he had a bigger picture because this planet was so small. Whereas our planet's so big, we get myopic. We get these small little pictures and we get locked into that, these little mechanical ways of thinking. Formatory part of intellectual center, which thinks in opposites and by comparison, has a difficult time getting outside of that. This work, though, imitates higher centers, where all opposites are united in harmony and there are no contradictions. Now, our minds won't wrap around that very easily because we think in contradictions and comparisons. Yes, no, right, wrong, up, down, black, white. And so it's difficult for us to get outside of that. We can't even imagine what it's like. We look at the algebraic equation, y plus n equals x, but we don't know what x is. And the problem is we hardly know how to solve for x, do we? You have to know something about y or n to solve for x, don't you? Mm -hmm. And if you don't know anything about y or n, you can't really solve for x. And so this work acts as something outside of our limited sphere, and it gives us a point of bearing, like a north star, so that we can begin to solve for different patterns, different directions, different things. Once we have one consistent thing, we can say, okay, we know this. And that's the value of this work. Because it comes from conscious humanity. It's different. It's outside of our way of thinking. 
And so it gives us a point that we can anchor to and we can begin to draw lines from and know that that point is for sure. And it gives us other points as well. So the third solution is some combination of yes and no so that opposites vanish and something new appears. So we know that there's a third solution. There's not just yes and no, there's some third solution, but we don't know what that is. We hear that it's no contradictions, but our minds won't grasp that. But we hear it. But the problem is, is we hear it enough and we'll think we understand it. And that's not the case. You may get a flash, an instant, just a twittering kind of in your mind and in your heart. Where you, I almost understand that. I know that's right. We do know. There's something inside of us that just knows that's right. There's something inside of us that says, that sounds right. But that doesn't mean you understand it. It just means it sounds right. There's something in you that's vibrating with it, harmonizing with it. And that's a good thing. It's probably magnetic center. Maybe not. Maybe it's something else. There are clever and right solutions that escape our heavy one-footed formatory thinking. There are more subtle things in the world than right, wrong, yes, no. It's about this, it's about that. Yes, you can do this. No, you can't do that. There are more subtle solutions. You understand that. You understand that politics really is a science, not the crap that's practiced today with the two-party system. But statesmanship is a science, the science of compromise, the science of removing opposites and contradictions and seeing a bigger picture. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. And we don't see a lot of that in our world today. Every once in a while we do. And somebody ends up winning a Nobel Peace Prize and then getting their head blown off. Because we all know that anybody with a Nobel Peace Prize deserves to be killed. Because we don't want any peace on this planet. And think about it. On our planet, we don't tolerate people who think with that third solution. We eliminate them. It's either or. Look at the Middle East the Palestinians and the Israelis. It's either or. Where's the solution to that? And what happens to the people who come up with a solution? They're assassinated. Doesn't say much for the level of being of the race that populates planet Earth. But there are clever. When I say clever, I don't mean clever in the way that we usually mean it. We mean clever generally in a bad way. I don't mean it in a bad way. The Bible calls it wise, but it's terribly mistranslated. It's really clever. It's sly. It's like the sly man. The work says a sly man is the kind of man that needs to do this work. A man that can cleverly find his way through. And that doesn't mean underhanded, but cleverly. And there are more clever ways and solutions that we don't get. The dogmatic yes or no is one-sided, useless, and wrong, quite frankly. And it's wrong given our aim. It blinds us to the inner octaves and the finer meanings that we seek. We seek sources of new meaning. The meaning that we have for everything in life isn't good enough because it will keep us here. We have to have new meaning. We've got to get new impressions from somewhere. You understand, seeing this whole bird issue as right or wrong, this or that, money or emotions or money or people, we've got to have something beyond that. There's got to be something bigger than that. Because if there's not, then you're stuck on this heavy one-footed boom, boom. There's no way out of that in and of itself. You've got to get beyond that to get out of that. Flashes won't do. We want to become conscious in our daily life. You have flashes all day long, I don't care. It doesn't do you much good. Unless they serve as shocks that can help increase your valuation of the work so that you will apply yourself with right effort more often and then make progress. Otherwise, flashes are just more stuff that goes to imagination, that goes to self-justification, that goes to complacency, and we're stuck. It just becomes mechanical. Higher centers are only heard when the emotional center is purified of negative emotions. I know you've heard this a million times, but we cannot hear things. We cannot hear higher centers when we're negified. Ne negified. When we're negified. That's good because negified is negative and identified. So we're negified. <laughs> when we're negified, we cannot hear higher centers. Good save. Good save. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's all invention is, is a good save. On this planet, we invent things by accident. We're under the law of accident. We're mechanical. We're negative. And we can't hear, and we can't come under the influence of higher centers because we're negative and identified. And the <laughs> static of all that is so loud, we can't hear the stillness and the quietness and the soft voice of the higher centers. Think of the solutions that you come up with when you're negative. They aren't very clever, are they? Yeah.
<laughs> They're heavy footed, aren't they? It's heavy footed hopping, isn't it? There's no tiptoeing around anything when we're negative. We make bold, stupid statements that we can never live up to. Or that if we try to live up to, we really screw things up. We speak in these broad, slashing opposites. The pendulum has swung, and it's at its extreme, and we open our mouths. Right when we need to keep our mouths shut is the time that that pendulum gets over there to the extreme. We start singing our opera, don't we? It's like Steve was telling me about the bird story the other day. I'm like, Man, I've heard this song a thousand times. I mean, it was the same old song. People are more important than animals. Right. I got it. So people are more important than animals. And money is more important than people. That's not what I'm saying. You're not listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm never listening when I'm disagreeing with you. Have you ever noticed that? No. No, I haven't ever noticed that. Okay. <laughs> Well, that's obvious, <laughs> but you know, sometime when you're not this negative and this identified, I'm not negative and identified. You know, when we're negative and identified, we're never negative and identified. They are, but we're not. You're the one that's negative and identified, not me. We are just ironclad nitwits. <laughs> We've got it locked up. So it's like, what do you do? I keep trying. Because that's how you stretch. That's how you grow. That's how you find the third solution. You just try and get bigger than all that. You try and find no contradiction. You try and find the solution where there is no contradiction. That's your goal. You just try and not resist and back up until you fall backwards into a higher center. And that's how it happens. For me, that's how it happens. I don't know how it happens for anybody else. I just let go, let go, let go, let go until I fall into a higher center. I find myself there and it's like, oh, it's like this. Now, that doesn't mean you're there, but it doesn't stop you from thinking you are. I've noticed that as well, which is comical in its own right. We can't live by how the pendulum swings. These eyes at either extreme of the pendulum swing, they try to tempt us to make impossible violent decisions that we can't keep. In the little world where you don't tell anybody about these things, that can exist. So your pendulum can swing in this little space. But if you bring it outside into the wind and into the light and into the world where other people can see it, then it can't swing quite as far because you become more conscious. And if you can become more conscious, you then can limit the swing of the pendulum. You actually have the power through a force of will to limit the swing of the pendulum and to determine even when it's at this extreme or that extreme, not to speak. Don't speak at those times. Shut up. That's called inner stop. You make inner stop. So inside you say no. I will do nothing at this point, and I will do nothing at that point. The only time that I will allow myself to think about talking is when I'm at the middle. But I'm not there very long. No, not only that, we're not there very long, but we sleep through the middle part of the ride. The only time that we're awake is at this extreme or at this extreme, as a rule. But through the whole middle, we sleep. It's so boring. But boy, give me that high of the roller coaster, or give me that low of the roller coaster. I'm awake then. I'm screaming then, Wah! this is really fun. I'll pay to go back on that one. Think about the lines at Disneyland and Magic Mountain for those nut job rides of extremes. That just is an out picturing of how we live our lives inside. See, it's only in the middle that anything can be done. And we forget that. We forget that it's only in the middle part of this pendulum swing that anything can be done. And that's the part where we need to be conscious, but that's the part where we sleep and we're conscious at either end. Don't listen to the eyes at either extreme. If you're unconscious, you'll say yes to all the moods and impressions of like or dislike. There's no question of yes or no if you're unconscious. So what does that mean? If you're unconscious, you'll say yes to everything. There's no question of yes or no. You'll say yes to everything. So if somebody comes in and they go, well, you're a stupid idiot. You'll say yes to that. Oh, yeah, I'll show you. You said yes to it. Somebody comes in and they go, oh, man, you're looking great today. Did you get your hair cut? Is that a new suit? What's up? You say yes to that. There's no question of yes or no. You say yes to it. When you're unconscious, you say yes to everything. You accept everything. You identify with everything. It's only when you start to become a little bit conscious, you start to wake up a little bit, there's a yes or no. Somebody comes in, you stupid looking jerk. I can't believe you're wearing that. I'm not taking that. That's his gift. You've said no to it. But still, you see, we're still in that yes or no. Thing. Working on yourself. Let's say you notice an impression of dislike regarding some person. You say no to that inner state that comes with that. That person. Somebody brings up that person. Saddam Hussein. 
Oh, I don't, he's a jerk. Man. I hear they're going to hang the guy. Connie told me the other day they're going to hang him. I said, that is a travesty of justice. They're going to hang the guy. This is political. This is ridiculous. I mean, it's really absurd. I don't expect anybody to understand that. And some people may. But it's going to be in the yes or no. People are going to be yes or no over that, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Yes, hang him. No, don't hang him. Capital punishment is wrong. Capital punishment is right. I'm not saying either of those. I'm saying that the political machine of this planet is a travesty of justice. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying this in such a bigger way. Saddam Hussein, it has nothing to do with what I'm saying. Step way back to the level of the solar system or to the level of the galaxy and look at it, where it's not day or night, where it's not up or down. Well, if you step back far enough, there is no day or night. There is no in or out. There is no up or down because it's too big. Step back far enough. And you begin to see things that you couldn't see when you were up close like that. So you notice this impression. You don't like this person. You have some negative impression. And so you say no to it. And that works for a while. Then you start to think about that person after they're gone. And you start to feel negative again. And you say no to it. But that doesn't work. So you start to think of them in a different way. You start to think of them more generously. You start to think of their good qualities. Well, you know, there's got to be something. The, the guy does this and the guy does that. Blah, 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 right? You understand what I'm talking about? This is what you do, isn't it? First you go from the negative, from saying no to it. And that doesn't work, and that doesn't work, and that doesn't work. It works for a little while, but then it starts to fade. And then you start to move to external consideration. You try and put yourself in that person's position. In other words, you try and build yourself up to the place where you can find something about them not to be negative about. Okay? Yes. So we think generously of the person. This is yes or no. Solving the problem by identifying with one or the other opposite. It's not bringing them together, the practice of yes and no, bringing them together. It's practicing yes or no, one or the other. So why am I saying this? If you can manage to use the second method, yes and no, rather than yes or no, you'll get results that you can't get with yes or no. Make sense? Yes and no, you go so far and only so far with a certain thought or feeling. Yes or no. You just go so far, but then you stop. And then you include the other. And again, you just go so far, a short distance either way. But it's got to be a conscious act of will. It's not like a full swing of the pendulum. It's you begin to willfully, consciously pull the swing of the pendulum in, on both ends. And that takes effort. It takes real effort. I'm not saying you can do this, but you can try. You can make an effort. You can try this and fail and try this and fail, and try this and fail. It's like trying to lift 200 pounds, if you can't lift 200 pounds. Trying to bench press 200 pounds, if you can't bench press 200 pounds. If you will consistently try to do that, eventually you will build the muscle structure to do that, if you are anywhere close to being able to do that. What I mean is, you know, you're not going to get a two-year-old to do it, but cut me some slack here. When we observe ourselves in the right way, we begin to include the dark side of ourselves. The side that's in darkness that we talked about, was it last week? We talked about last week. And so we change our feeling of I, knowing for a fact that we are both yes and no in regard to everything. you got to see the power in this. There's an incredible power in this. When you begin to see all of what's in you, when you begin to really know yourself and embrace it and include it, you become more powerful. What about all that bad stuff? All that bad stuff is only bad in comparison. Once you have the power, you can pick and choose. Well, I'm not sure if we're done with this. We may talk about this again next week. Depends, I don't know. Because this is a good place to stop, so we're stopping now. But I think there's more to this.